Now I'm going to read this most serious and most necessary book, most revealing book by Jack Chick called Smokescreens. Understanding the dangers of today's call for Christian unity. Introduction. <clears throat> Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What you are going to read in this book is absolutely devastating. The information and the facts we're going to present are going to change your life. Be patient with me and please follow through to the end of the book. You will never be the same. That is true. I have just read this book. Most of you know from studying your Bibles that Satan will build a false superchurch, the whore of Revelation, chapters 6, 13, 17, and 18. According to Bible prophecy, she will have great political, economic, military, and educational power, and she will persecute and murder the true believers in Christ. I always used to wonder how Satan would be able to pull this off right under Christians' noses without them being aware of what was happening and fighting back. But Satan is the master deceiver and I am beginning to see how he has cleverly set up smoke screens to hide the identity of the whore from the majority of Christian believers. Let me explain what I mean by smoke screens. In warfare, you have enemy action. When they're moving in, they set up a smoke screen and the smoke confuses everyone so that you don't know where your enemies are. That's one technique. The other is a fifth column where you have a country that's about to fall. So you send in agents and they wear the people down saying it's hopeless or saying no, the enemy isn't really going to attack. And they, in a sense, put up their own smoke screens to confuse the issue before the assault comes. I believe an assault is coming by the whore of revelation. I believe they are setting up smoke screens and that there are others within the Christian community that are setting up smoke screens. Now we believe at Chick Publications that the whore of revelation is the Roman Catholic institution. Our position is not something new. During the Reformation, you had men like Martin Luther, John Knox, Calvin, a great number of them. And then the great preacher like Moody, Finney, Spurgeon and so on. They all believed the same thing, that the Vatican was the whore. It wasn't until lately that things have changed. Notice that. It wasn't until, until lately that things have changed. You see, the Jesuits influenced people and they started setting up smoke screens during our times through our theological seminaries. And when the, that smoke screen came up, we started seeing the whore of Revelation in a different light. They said, oh no, that is something coming in the future. Or, that happened way back in the past. This is done to confuse the Christians. Today, many people believe this. They have been beguiled like I was when I first listened to some of these people. It was a clever smokescreen. I was confused at first, 
But now I see the whore in, in her filthiness. No, in her fullness, sorry. Well, filthiness, you could, you could say that all the same. And it is scary. I want to show you in this book some of her activities in the past, what she's doing today, and what her ultimate goal is for the future. Some will be overwhelmed when they hear this message. But I believe with all my heart that this information must be told. People must be aware of what's going on and how Satan is working to destroy the work of God in these closing hours. There has been a multi-million dollar campaign made through the media to convince people that I am a bigoted, anti-Catholic, hate literature, literature publisher. And do you know something? They have been very effective in convincing people that this is what I am. The truth is, I love Catholic people enough to risk my life and my business to reach them with the gospel of Christ, to pull them out of the false religious system they're now serving. I know that this system has done, I know what this system has done in the past and what it is planning for the future. I believe you'll understand when we've finished this message where I'm coming from. But before we get started, let's go into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord, we come before you and we thank you, Father, for Calvary and your finished work. Lord, for the terrible price you paid for our sins, so that we could be taken into the Beloved. Father, we thank you that we can come before the throne of grace in boldness, and that you are a God who hears and answers prayer, Lord. That you protect and love and watch over us. In Jesus' name we bind the forces of darkness surrounding anyone reading this book. And we loosen the angels of God to protect them against the attacks of satanic forces. I pray you will open their spiritual eyes and give them wisdom that they may understand. I bind any critical or self-righteous spirit in any of the readers in Jesus' name. Lord, help us to be broken before you as we turn to you for our help. And Lord, we pray that as a result of this book, souls will be saved across this land, that a fire will, will start to burn in the hearts of Christians, that they will see who, is their, who, their, enemy, who their enemy is, how Satan is moving and know how to combat it, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask your, your help to win the victory over the powers of darkness. Open the eyes, of, uh, eyes and ears of those who are reading, Father. Touch them and let them realize what's coming upon the earth. Let us be faithful, Lord, in your service. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Publisher's Note Although this book was written in the early 80s, the Vatican's strategies are still the same. Some of the historical figures cited are not current, but still illustrate the valid points of the book. In fact, predictions in the book and uh, in the book that describe the, the march toward ecumenism continue to be confirmed by current de developments. Chapter 1. The Wafer God There are some Christians who are awake to what is going on, but there are many Christians today who believe everything is just fine. Everybody loves everybody else. The Christians, Mormons, Jews, Jehovah's Witnesses, Muslims, 
are all serving the same God, but in different ways. That's what they think. If I asked, can you partake of the Lord's Supper with Catholics? They'd say, why not? Let's find out if there is a difference between the Lord's Supper and the Mass. Before I go on, let me explain that the bread or wafer used in the Mass is called the host. When the host has been consecrated and offered as a sacrifice in the Mass, it then becomes the Eucharist. I'm going to try to put into everyday language what is one of the great motivating forces behind the Roman Catholic institution. It is the Eucharist. I call it the little Jesus cookie. I know Catholics are going to be offended by this, but I can't help it. The Protestants have to realize where they stand on this thing. The Roman Catholic institution in their canon laws state, If anyone shall deny that the body and blood, together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore entire Christ, are truly, really, and substantially contained in the sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist, and shall say that he is only in it as a sign or in a figure, let him be accursed. Accursed means to be damned under a curse. If anyone shall say that Christ, the only begotten Son of God, is not to be adored in the Holy Sacrament of the Eucharist, and that he is not to be publicly set forth, no, to be publicly set before the people to be adored, and that his adorers are idolaters, let him be accursed. That's what, this, that's what the Catholics say. Here you have John Paul II in this, in this service of love. See, lifting up the way for God and everyone worships it. They worship the bread or that cookie. They worship a cookie. I do not. That's when, beloved, the priest walks, uh, walks out holding up the cookie in the monstrance, which looks like a sunburst. And people come up and kiss it and adore it. And if any Protestant would say, hey, that's idolatry, that Protestant is to be accursed. Well, then I'm accursed. If you're not accursed by the Catholics, then you are deceived. Here's the, the sunburst where they put the cookie into and they worship this thing. That is the Roman Catholic Jesus. That's not my Jesus. The Eucharist in the monstrance being carried in a procession. They worship that thing in a sun. That's the symbol of a sun. That's because Roman, Catholic, Roman Catholicism is in actuality sun worship. It's not Christianity at all. It never has been. It's idolat idolatry right to the core. Now, to sum this up, the Roman Catholic institution teaches that you must believe that the bread or host consecrated in the Mass actually becomes Jesus Christ and it is to be worshipped. As God Almighty. This is why back in 1554, a priest carrying the Eucharist, the little Jesus cookie, could stand before a family of Christians in Scotland, tied to posts with dried brush 
up to their waists. He'd hold that piece of bread before them and ask if what he held in his hand was actually the body, blood and deity of Jesus Christ. When they said, no, it is only a symbol, the priest's assistant placed his flaming torch into the brush and set those Bible believers on fire. As the victims screamed in agony, the priest held up his crucifix and said, All this is for the greater glory of God. Is this the actual blood and body of Jesus Christ? See, he holds a round cookie, round like the sun. No, it is symbolic. Burn this heretic too. All this history has been covered up. But read Fox's Book of Martyrs. It is true. It holds firm just as strong today as it did in the time of the Middle Ages that anyone who ridicules it or says that it only represents Christ is damned. The Vatican II Council reaffirmed this. Pope John XXIII said, I do accept entirely all that has been decided and declared in the Council of Trent. That canon law is in effect today, beloved. Vatican II affirmed the Council of Trent from 1568 or, 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 or when, whenever it was. And that is the law that is in effect in the Catholic Church today. So Vatican Council I from 1560 is still in effect. And it curses us Protestants. The Catholics are liars.